Yorkshire Lager. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I've got one here today from the People's Republic of Yorkshire. And it's the C84 Yorkshire Lager. Now, there's a lot to get through in this. So, that was Percy, by the way. Do you know what that little fucker did to me the other day? I took him out for a walk over the field and he ran into a bush. And I went after him and I had a pair of trainers and a, sh and a pair of shorts on. And my foot went into the muddiest fucking puddle ever. It was like fucking Dr. Foster, that old fucking chestnut. And it went right up to my leg. Trainers totally fucking destroyed. I put them in the washing machine and they come out and they look like shit. So cheers for that, Percy. He doesn't give a fuck. Do your purse. No, not interested. Anyway, enough about my misfortunes or my dog walking. This is Yorkshire Lager and it comes from the C84 Brewery. Now, they were originally the Cropton Brewery who were based in the New Inn in a place near Pickering, which is in North Yorkshire. It's right near the Yorkshire Moors. And it's a real tale of humble beginnings. They started in 1984 as two brothers, Phil and Paul Lee, I think their names were. And they came up with a, a brew, I think it was called Two Pints or something like that. And it proved to be quite a success. This was in 1984. And it just went on from there. They started brewing beer for the pub, their own pub. And then they started brewing it for other pubs and it became quite popular. They did other beers. I've reviewed one on the channel. It's fucking hard to get this stuff down here, I'll tell you. I had to, well, I got this when I was in Yorkshire. This has come from the House of Trembling Madness. Just don't see it down here, which is a shame because I tried, and I've reviewed it on the channel, and you can see that. I tried the Cropton Yorkshire Moor. I don't know whether that's available now, but I had to get that direct from some Yorkshire heritage place. And it wasn't cheap. The postage was quite hefty but it was well worth it it was great and it was one of the best that i've tried and i still remember how good it was now so this lot are quite a good brewery i've reviewed a couple of their beers since then now that they've changed their name from the crotton brewery to this c84 brewery and they also incorporate the great yorkshire brewery into that brewery as well so that i think from what i can make out it's it's really hard to understand what's going on there, but I think there's two breweries. They use the same premises, but they just use different brand names. So I imagine it's all the same equipment. Could be what they call a cuckoo brewery, which is basically a company comes along and uses the facility in the breweries. They haven't got their own brewery, so they're just using all the facilities and making the beers to their own recipes. Anyway, that's where we are now. And it's a lager. Now, English lager is not something that I rant and rave about. And the simple fact for that is, I don't think we brew great lager in this country. Now, there's a, I, I know there's a lot of craft brewers who are doing helices at the moment. And they range, and I had actually, I was drinking one last night from the Time and Tide Brewery, their Hellas, which wasn't bad. And they do a Keller beer as well. That wasn't bad. I've reviewed them both on the channel. They're from Kent, they're a local brewer. I was out last night with a mate and there's a craft brew pub in Maidstone that we went to. They do really good local beers and that was one of them. And it was quite good, I have to say. But then you get the, from that, which is good, to the, the other end of the spectrum, which is stuff like Cloudwater doing helices with American hops and they just taste like pale ales, and I just think, why have you done that, you idiots? Don't call it a Hellas or a Pilsner if you're gonna throw American hops in there. Because it's not. Oh, no, I'm not gonna go in and rant about craft beer and their overuse of American hops. It's, it's not, it hasn't really got a place in there. I don't wanna devote time for it. You know my views on it all. But yeah, I, when it comes to lager, I think the hops that you should be using 
should not be American hops. If you're gonna use American hops, then you call it a lager because it's bottom fermented. Yeah, I get that. But call it something else. Call it an American style lager. Don't call it a fucking Hellas or anything like that because it's nothing of the sort or a Pilsner like Cloudwater have done. I know I keep going on about it, but I was really disappointed with that because Cloudwater are good. Are, are good at doing IPAs, American style IPAs. That is their forte. They really do it well. So I thought in my naivety that they'd be willing to uphold the traditions of brewing lager, pilsners, etc. But no, they just throw a load of American hops in it, call it a fucking pilsner, and expect you to buy it. And yeah, I, I don't I don't get that at all. But I like what they've done here. Because this they call this Yorkshire Lager and they've used English hops in there. And I'll get onto the hops what they are in the next section. But I like that they've done that. They've not just called it a lager, they've not just called it you know, a Hellas or a Pilsner, etc. They've they've put down there that it's a regional lager. So I know what to expect. If I see Yorkshire lager on there, I'm gonna be expecting English hops, English malt, and their take on a lager, which I think this is gonna be. Just a quick word about Yorkshire. As you may or may not know, I went up to York, and I wanna just tell you, I mean, if you're from up around there, this is, you know, this is me like, like me ranting and raving about the fucking wheel that was invented years ago. Do you know what I mean? But one thing that they do, and it's fantastic, especially in York, they do the equivalent of an English kebab. Now, it's not really a kebab, but it's a Yorkshire pudding, and they wrap a roast dinner in there. No potatoes, you have to buy the potatoes separately, but your meat and your veg is wrapped in there. You can have gravy or horseradish, I had horseradish, and let me tell you, it was absolutely fucking gorgeous. Now, if anybody's hit, hit on here or viewing this, and you live down in the south, and you're looking for an enterprise to open, I know it's difficult to do this with, with COVID and all that, but if you wanna make some money, and you've got a little bit of capital to expand on that, open up a takeaway Yorkshire pudding shop where you've put in a roast dinner. They, they were doing it for £3.50, and honestly it filled me up for the whole day. And it was great, it tasted amazing. And believe it or not, and this is the truth, I seriously did, when I first moved to Kent, I seriously did, with the money that I got from the sale of my flat in London, I seriously thought about opening up a pie and mash shop. And I looked into it, I was, had all the recipes, I was getting all the suppliers and stuff like that. But then the missus wanted to buy a salon, and I decided she knows more about cutting hair than I do about pie and mash. Well, I love, I love pie and mash. I fucking I can eat it till it comes out of my ear holes. But actually making it and selling it, yeah, that might have been a bit of an ask. So in the end, that money went on a salon for her. But then she got cancer, unfortunately, and uh, yeah, she had to give it up. But she is where she is now. She's working in the salon. She's absolutely loving it. And everything is good in the hood. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get on to the beer. This is Yorkshire Lager from the People's Republic of Yorkshire. It's 4.2% ABV, so a nice session lager. It's 500 mil. Now, remember I was talking about the hops? Here you go. It, I'll just read out the description first. It, it, it's incorporating what the hops are. A light session lager brewed with goldings and caramel, which is nice for an earthy and slightly sweet tasting English lager. That is brilliant. You're laying out, the style is an English lager, and you've put English ingredients on it. None of this pretentious Hellas bollocks or Pilsner or whatever. It's an English lager, and I like that because it does what it says on the tin. A bit like people from Yorkshire. They say what they like, and they like what they bloody well say. Ingredients, water, or water, as they say up there. You know what, I learned this the other day. I'm quite into the etymology of you know, languages and stuff like that. And the reason why southerners will say water and up north they say water is to do with the Viking roots and the German roots from the Anglo-Saxons that we have down here. Stuff like water, which is a German word, it's from the German word Wasser. Um, the Germanic language of the Vikings, obviously Old Norse, they would pronounce that water and they still use that in sort of Newcastle and they have that type of pronunciation of the vowels. I think it all comes back from, or all goes back to the 
the old Norse that was spoken half of the country, whereas down here, you have words like, for example, lager, which they elongate the A, and that comes from the Saxon. So there's a little bit to it than that. That's why we call it lager, and it comes from the German word lager, and we elongate our R's. When we say water, up there they would say water and stuff like that. So yeah, it's all to do with that. Yeah, so that's about it really. It's not bottle conditioned, um, doesn't say it's unpasteurized, I'm assuming it's filtered. So yeah, this is 500ml bottle. There is ye oldy label. Yorkshire fucking lager, you bastards. Let's get it home, let's see what's going on. Right, this came from the House of Trembling Madness and it was £2.40 for 500ml lager. That ain't too bad, it's about what you'd pay for a German lager. How does this compete with German lagers? I will tell you momentarily. Hold that fault. I'm getting it into the to ye oldy glass now. I can actually smell that from here. And it smells really malty. It looks just like a lager. If anything, it's slightly darker. This is interesting. There's a lot of lemon citrus on this. But I'm getting that earthiness that they're talking about, definitely. That's really prominent. And the English hops. It smells like a golden ale. And I know the reason it's smelling like a golden ale is because they're using the English hops in it. Obviously, the golden ale is usually, well, it is top fermented. This is bottom fermented. So, could this be just like a, a bottom fermented golden ale? Yeah, there's real English character off this. There's a lot of earth. That's the predominant aroma that I'm getting. There's some slight flowery notes on top of that. And there is a little bit of sweet malt. Like, to me, it, it smells like sort of a biscuit type malt. But it's, I must say, it does smell quite appealing. So let's see what it tastes like. Bottoms up. Oh, that is good. That is really nice. Mmm. Yeah. That's really good. Mmm. Oh, that's, that's so good. And it's really interesting that this is putting me in mind slightly of a Czech Pilsner. And this beer reminds me of the Einsiedler um, Burmish, which is their take on a Bohemian or Czech lager, if you like. Now, I'm just... I've just made the connection. So what they've got here, they've got a light session lager brewed with goldings and caramel. Now, <clears throat> you can get Styrian goldings. I'm not sure whether this is what they've used in here or whether they're East Kent goldings. I'm not sure, I'm not gonna speculate. I can't find that on the website. I did have a look to see what was in there. But it would make sense. Now. Styrian Goldings, obviously they're not a noble hop, but they do have some of the characteristics of a noble hop. And I can see why they've used Goldings in here. If they'd have put Challenger in there, maybe it would be more of a German type Pilsner, but it's not. And it's quite malt heavy as well. There is, as they say, they put caramel in there, which is a slightly darker malt, and as the name suggests, it gives you a little tang of caramel malt on there. But it's, this is really good. In a blindfold test, I would say 
that is a heavily influenced Czech lager, if not a Czech lager. But it isn't, they've made that their own because they've used English hops in it. And I'm absolutely loving it. That is fantastic. That has really bowled me over as lagers go. Now, <clears throat> earlier in the video, and I think with some justification, I said I don't go much on English lagers. It's not really what we get right. It's not really what we produce and have a reputation for. It says something that the, the best-selling lager in the UK is American. I imagine that's Budweiser. It could be wrong. It could be Foster's. Foster's isn't really us. Well, it is, Foster's is Australian, but it's, it's brewed over here. Um, Carlin is Canadian. So, and Heineken, Carlsberg. Do you see where I'm coming from? We don't produce, I don't think, in my opinion, my humble opinion, I don't think this country has a native lager that we produce that everybody likes. If you just, if you walk into a supermarket now, or even your corner shop, you'll see, off the top of my head, you'll see Beck's which is in effect from a German, a German brewer. You may be lucky and see Budvar. That's a fantastic Czech pale lager. You will see Foster's, you will see Heineken, you will see Carlsberg, you will see Budweiser, all macro brewed by big corporations, no connection to the United Kingdom whatsoever. And you'll see Stella Artois, again, another one that's a big corporation, AB InBev. So we really haven't got a native lager, which everybody enjoys. This, on the other hand, if this was brewed on a bigger scale and they could get the price down a little bit to compete with the, the macro brewers, they might have to cut some corners with that. But I'll tell you something, this is fantastic. Oh, that's so good. That is brilliant. I'll go as far as to say, this is the best British brewed lager I have tried since the Sam Smith's organic lager. And I think that would give the Sam Smith's a run for its money. Now, don't get me wrong, Sam Smith's brew on a bigger scale. This is brewed on, I would say with some conviction that this is brewed on a smaller scale. However, Sam Smith's, get it right with their organic lager. That's a fantastic British lager. Sadly, not many people drink it. You may drink it if you walk into a Sam Smith's pub, but I think this is the next best thing to the Sam Smith's organic lager. And if you can get it down here, I advise you to get it because that is brilliant. I absolutely love that. So what's the verdict on Yorkshire Lager from the C84 Brewery? In a word, that is fantastic. I'm bowled over by how good that is. It's, it's one of them beers that I picked up and I thought, Yorkshire Lager, it's gonna be bad. I had that in my head because, as I said, I don't think this country does great lagers. Sam Smith's being the exception, until I actually tried it. And I think this is probably as good as the Sam Smith stuff. That's how much I rate this. Sadly, it's hard to get hold of down here. And I'm not sure whether it's widely available up north either. But I know you can get it online. And if you see it online, or you want to try, and I urge you to do this, support a traditional English brewer. Get yourself some of this. It's £2.40 a bottle. Believe me, it is worth it. Is it better than any of the German stuff? Um, certainly not the Bavarian stuff, no. I will put my neck out and say no, it's not. However, it would give some German lagers a run for their money, I think. It, it, but it's got more in common with a Czech lager. It's got that type of, it's got that type of feel to it. Now, Czech lagers, they invariably use Sartz hops. Sartz hops, of course, is a noble hop. They haven't used that in here, they've used English Goldings. I'm assuming they're English Goldings, they could have been Styrian Goldings, I'm not sure. But whatever they've used, it's put a, an English slant on it. But with the caramel, that has morphed into what I can only compare to a Czech lager. And it's lovely. It's really nice. 
and it's 4.2%, so you can session this all day long. Um, that is perfect. For me, that is 10 out of 10. If I gave it anything less, I wouldn't be doing it justice. It's really nice. It's got a lovely, earthy, malty taste to it, but it's also got a little bit of a hoppy twang to it. Lovely mouthfeel, full-bodied as well, a full-bodied lager, if you can imagine that. And it's really nice. I, yeah, I'm just bowled over by how good that is. It's fantastic. 10 out of 10, definitely recommend it. Even if you only buy one bottle, just try it. It's fantastic. And remember, just like this stuff, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>